welcome to another edition of Metis Warrior, and uh, you're here with Timothy and Alexandria. Welcome to the show. Welcome, everybody, and uh, again, June is National Indigenous History Month all through Canada. If there's events where you're located, get out, celebrate, learn about your Indigenous embrace, and celebrate your Indigenous history. And so we got to ask ourselves, why is it that the Métis National Council is led by Cassidy? Why is it that they seem to want to disrespect and snub Cuthbert Grant Jr., one of the key figures in Métis history? Why in the hell are they snubbing him in their little history post? And actually, you got to wonder, who the hell is writing their history post? Where are they getting this shit from? Yeah, like Timothy just said, they're de they're doing these blurbs on social media to celebrate Indigenous History uh, Month. And again, like I said, I'll reiterate what Timothy said. Who is writing in this information? And I got to wonder, uh, you know, on historical accuracy and stuff again, why Cuthbert Grant Jr. is not mentioned. And I'm going to give uh, two examples. For example, uh, there's one where they're talking about the captains of the hunt played an important role in the consensual democracies of our early communities held dearly. And I'm not going to read more of it. And uh, if people would do research, simple research, because it's all over social media. Cuthbert Grant was a leader in his community. He was the captain of the buffalo hunt. And then he led a party of the Métis to the Battle of Seven Oaks, which is coming up. And again, in 1821, he was appointed uh, warden of the plains. So I'm just wondering why these uh, little blurbs for Indigenous History Month are kind of vague. I mean, why wouldn't you honor uh, an, a Métis, the first leader of the Métis people who was a captain of the buffalo hunt? Why wouldn't you name him? I'm just, I'm not understanding why he gets snubbed. snubbed by Cassidy and the Métis National Council. And we know that Cassidy has failed the Métis Nation under her leadership as far as transparency. Zip, zip, zero, not a damn thing concerning transparency. So she should really uh, not even use that word anymore. But anyway, but uh, but, but yeah, the, this group of people uh, have decided to snub Cuthbert Grant Jr. It seems to us, I mean, you know, if you really want to list, uh, look up the history of the Métis people, there's other uh, pages out there. You can even go to our page, the Métis Warrior page, and, and look up some history on there. And at least you're not going to get people snubbed. And when you snub somebody as important as, important as Cuthbert Grant Jr., there's a severe issue there. It seems to me that I, I, I don't know if their selfie cam is not a, doesn't have a, a Google search engine or anything of that nature where they can actually maybe do a little research. And uh, that would be awesome. Just do a little research and put some names out there as far as our key historical Métis people. But uh, they have put names out there and this other screenshot, and this is where uh, my mind continues to be boggled. And the, uh, another blurb is the legacy of nation building in the Métis communities cannot be understated. Elders have continued to ensure that the stories of Louis Riel, Gabrielle Dumont, uh, Buckskin Mary, I, I never heard of Buckskin Mary, and Lady Lawheed were among uh, others and shared with the younger generation. So if you're putting these blurbs out on social media to try and share with our youth to learn about uh, uh, Métis history, like Timothy said, do your research, do your historical research. You know, you've, you've mentioned Louis Riel, Gabrielle Dumont, that's great. But if you would do simple research, you would know that Cuthbert Grant Jr. was effectively bilingual and he was the first educated Métis to wield a profound influence over the fate of his people. He was largely responsible for implanting in their minds the concept of a Métis nation that played such a vital role in the Red River. And maybe that's the key word here. Red River Uprising of 1869 to 70 and the Northwest Rebellion of 1885. And I'm just alleging, is it maybe because most of the history to do with Cuthbert Grant Jr. 
uh, focuses on Manitoba. This is just so, my opinion. I'm alleging that. I, I'm just putting it out there, folks. So, so yeah, uh, the thing is, like, what, what, what's, what's really going on? So you're going to just snub somebody because they were an important key figure in the in Manitoba for the Red River? I mean, come on. What's going on here? We, we, we're not understanding it. And, uh, if, and here's the thing, man. There's a lot of political bullshit going on back and forth, but you don't snub our key historical figures from the past because they don't have nothing to do with the political infighting of these organizations. So, I mean, that that's a little childish. I know that eight-year-olds can write posts better, historical posts better than what the MNC is putting out right now. Yeah, it, it, again, it's disturbing if you're trying to celebrate Indigenous History Month. Be kind of uh, historically correct. Uh, politics really should have to, nothing to do with educating about history, and you should really put it out there. So I'm going to leave that topic alone because I could go on and on, but it's just uh, the information that is being put out is not, in my opinion, historically accurate. They're not and, even and by putting... the way, by the way, <laughs> just so we understand, Alexandria is related to Cuthbert Grant Jr., and so am I. And so is uh, other people that Cassidy may not like. And that might be another reason why uh, Cuthbert's getting snubbed. But regardless of, of whether you like people that's existing today or not, uh, and there's all this infighting, you still show respect to our ancestors. That's right. And like I said, you shouldn't have your personal opinion about individuals cloud uh, leading a nation and cloud uh, teaching uh, youth and children about uh, the importance of Métis history. And again, Cuthbert Grant Jr. was the first leader of the Métis people. So maybe I would invite Cassidy and other members of the MNC to do some re research and find out who Cuthbert Grant Jr. was and really how important he was. And still is. Still, ab ab absolutely, still, still is. So let's talk about... Um, the MMF election, and we know that... Election? They didn't have no <laughs> damn election. That was a damn joke, man. This is supposed to be democracy. Hey, we, we're not saying that Chartran should have been replaced because of the way that the stuff went down at MNC and the way uh, the replacement of Chartier went, and it's been a complete mess as far as what we've seen so far, and it's, it seems to be getting worse worse at the MNC, uh, as far as what we see and other Métis people see, and I'm gonna tell you this, that, uh, oh yeah, so when you come to the uh, the Manitoba Métis Federation election, or lack thereof, that's a bunch of bullshit. There should have been a, an election, people should have changed seats, there should have been some new people put on the, the seats of this board, and, it, and this is a bunch of BS, I mean, I'm highly, aggravated with this even though our opinions have been changed a little bit about Chartrand right now I can tell you that it it was wrong it was completely wrong to not hold an election in our eyes we think that there should have been an election which if you keep in mind in our last show we said that we were going to do the show uh, right before the election and then we were going to do one right after or right at and, uh, of course, that's why you haven't seen one in a while, because, yeah, there, there was no damn election. Well, and that, and then plus, there's just so much chaos going on within various uh, Métis organizations across Canada. And let's sort of touch, uh, delve more into the MMF, uh, what was supposed to be the recent election. And uh, David Chartrand, the, the current president of the Manitoba Métis Federation, David Chartrand, was seeking his eighth term as president. He's been in there for 25 years as the president of the Manitoba Métis Federation. Uh, the last MMF election was held on May 31st, 2018. And uh, we know uh, a lot of people seeing it on social media. There was a notice of a 2022 MMF national election and um, they were saying that the uh, election would be held on June 14th, 2022 and the polls would be open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And, you know, you read all the eligibility call for nominations and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, people had a little bit of uh, hope and all that. And I know that on May, you had until May 20th, 2022, by 5 p.m. for any elector may challenge a candidate for president or within the region. And um, it, it boggled my mind when I read that, again, th this is just one of them. David Chartrand was acclaimed 
again as the president of the Manitoba Métis Federation, and they were saying that this was a historic first for the Manitoba Métis Federation when all positions open for election were decided by acclamation, folks. And um, which is a bunch of bullshit. I don't. I, I think they should, if it's a democracy, the people need uh, a fair democracy within any organization. And I think that there should have been elections. But what I'm going to tell you is that, yeah, I, I was I was not for Chartrand being voted out of office myself. Personally, I wasn't. Uh, I know Alexandria may have a different take on that. but And the reason why is because of what happened with MNC and with the mess that we've seen out there. But also the fact that the Manitoba Métis Federation has been doing great things within Manitoba. I mean, they're doing really, really good. There's a lot of positive things going on. And I mean, it's, it's so great to hear elders come around talking about how proud they are of the MMF. So yeah, you, you, have, you have an organization that's now running as a well-old machine. And I mean, the, I see the change. We see changes. Now, we disagree with the Manitoba Métis Federation on their views of the Métis in the East. We absolutely believe 100% there is Métis in the East. You'd have to be... Uh, uh, very confused, I'm going to put that nicely, to think that there's no Métis people in the East. Obviously, there is Métis people in the East. If you know the definition of what Métis is, then you would know that there's Métis in the East. However, there's a lot of fraudulent, fraudulent people claiming to be Métis for financial gain in the East as well. And I think that's what clouds the true Métis that's in the East. And But we do stand in disagreement with the MMF on that issue but as far as everything else right now, they seem to be running as a well old machine. And I can say I'm proud of them. Well, you know, talking about a well oiled machine, uh, for true democracy, in my opinion, in any organization, you have to have term limits for your key positions, like a president of an organization. And again, David Chartrand has been in this position for 25 years. I mean, you've got to get fresh blood in there, fresh ideas. We've all, we've spoken in the past on numerous shows, the importance for fairness, democracy, transparency for term limits. But we know that people have spoken in the past that it's so hard to uh, get into key high level positions at the MMF with all these criteria, volunteer and all this stuff to even get in. And I know nobody was running against David Chartrand. So if you make it hard for people to want to, uh, you know, get into a position, well, of course, you're going to get in by acclamation. So where is the democracy, the transparency and the accountability if you've been in that same seat for 25 years? I, I'm not understand. I don't see that as being a democratic uh, organization or a government. I don't see it either right now, uh, which is very disappointing because, <clears throat> yeah, they failed in the election process as far as the way we view it. They failed because it was not a fair election that we seen. We 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 don't we we're, we're still confused by this. But however, uh, with the exception of their views on the Métis in the East, and with the exception of the uh, the. This the last election, which, you know, it wasn't really an election uh, with everything else. They're doing good, but they fell in in a critical area, which is democracy in your organization. But again, I was not at that, that, that point in time or even this point in time wanting to see Chartrand voted out because they have been made a, a great, great leaps forward in, pro in progress and doing great things. And you, when you in the communities and you hear the elders and the people talking about how great things are being done by the MMF, it's really hard to, you can't just take, when we do these shows, I want people to understand, when we do these shows, we don't say things about organizations or bring things up about organizations unless they're citizens, citizens complaints. And so we don't take things personal. So we're not going to go after an organization just because we personally may not agree with them on a couple of issues. Well, we're not going to sit here and, and, and do shows about that. There would have to be citizen complaints. And so uh, a substantial amount of citizen complaints. And so uh, for us to actually cover things. 
And so that's, that's, and there has been in the past with the MMF, there's been a lot, a lot of citizen complaints, but now I'm not hearing those same complaints anymore because good God, things have really turned around. Wouldn't you agree? Well, they, they have, and I agree with you on those points, but the thing that kind of bothered me is the MMF election should have transpired on June 14th and already on May 21st, uh, 2022, you had a press release a uh, news release from the MMF that said the results in the Red River uh, Métis National General Election were already done already. So, I, 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 you know, at least 21 of the 22 positions will not have the election as the number of filed uh, nominations did not exceed the number of positions, and that included uh, uh, the president. And uh, all of, uh, according to the press release, all of the positions were elected by acclamation, and that was... Uh, by David Gray, who is the chief electoral officer, confirmed that this was the first time an entire election cycle had been decided by acclamation. So it was a first, a historic first for uh, the MMF. But let's talk about some key issues and differences between the Manitoba Métis Federation, the way they do business, and the Métis National Council, the way they're doing business. At least with the MMF, whether you agree with them on some issues or not, they are being transparent. There's transparency there. You just got to, if you have a question about something, you just got to look for it. They put out a lot of information. And so there is not transparency really at the Métis National Council. And that's that's one of the major differences. And, and so you got you to gotta wonder, yeah, the MMF pulled away from the Métis National Council. But look at how the Métis National Council has uh, turned out. Uh, not transparent, not accessible to the people. And there's some address concerns too that we'll address later on, I guess. Well, yeah, I'm going to, before I, I go into this uh, address, I just want to make mention, and the only place that I could see, and I've asked other people, maybe if somebody wants to reach out to us, that uh, on June 8th, uh, the Métis Nation of BC posted about uh, uh, the MNC Board of Governors meeting that took place June 6th to the 7th in Calgary. And there's a screenshot where um, I know President Lisa Don Smith, the newly elected uh, President uh, Walter Minot and this new CEO Colette Trudeau were in Calgary for the meeting of the Métis National Council Board of Governors. And uh, in my opinion, everybody kind of looks bored, but I'm just wondering why the MNC wouldn't post it. I couldn't find it on Twitter or Facebook where they were having a bog board of governors meeting. Isn't that something that the Métis people um, would want to know? Did they even know that it was a, a official meeting or did they think it was just a gathering of the few friends there? Because again, folks, one thing that you got to keep in mind, and we're going to get to Audrey, but you got to <laughs> keep in mind, I want all y'all to get your paperwork everywhere that you live, get your paperwork together, make sure that you're good to go when the elections come up and you're ready to vote. There's a reason that Audrey did not want to hold that election this year. But let's let's finish with the MNC yeah, and ahead. how their lack of transparency, accountability, and this just completely, uh, I just can't wrap my head around it. And I, I'm just wondering, this is my personal opinion, is the MNC office in outer space somewhere? We know that uh, they had to vacate. They did a... Uh, we mentioned that in a previous show, they had to vacate their office. And I find it funny, and um, people send me stuff, and I appreciate that very much. But on May 19th, uh, the Métis National Council on their website had their address uh, still as uh, Suite 4, uh, 340 McLaren Street on Ottawa. So that's May 19th. And then we're going to jump to uh, May 23rd. And then uh, the Métis National Council on their website for everybody to see had now suite 303-340 McLaren, McLaren Street, Ottawa. So they've got another suite number and then now you're going to jump to June 12th uh, where now they're, they're listing it as only, no suite number, 340 McLaren Street. So what the hell's going on with that address? What What's who, really going on? Who, who, who's I running don't understand. The show here? Like, uh, who's running the show with the MNC? Shouldn't your information on your web page be accurate? Where, okay, the previous one was 4 340 McLaren Street, then you switch it to 303 340 McLaren Street. Now, June 12th, it's just 340 McLaren Street. 
Uh, so well, do they, they not have, have an ass, office? If they half-ass in their indigenous history information, and they're uh, putting very minimal, it seems to us anyway, in our opinion, putting very minimal effort into that historical information. Well, what makes you think they give a shit or are putting any real work into the letting people know where their address is? I mean, you know, it's, it's concerning that it keeps changing. Uh, I don't really know what's really going on with this address. And again, that goes into transparency and having the people know what's really going on in this organization. Not just that, but the financial records, where in the hell are they at? We've been asking for them ever since Cassidy got in the office. Now, yeah, you've seen jack shit. Uh, seen jack shit. Well, we've been asking for the complete financial records. Uh, they're supposed to be posted for the people to see where in the hell are those records. And we're not, we're asking on behalf of the people. And so, you know, yeah, we're coming on the show and we ask on behalf of the people. The people want to know where in the hell is this financial information? Well, I mean, where is it? Well, you know what? The MNC is supposed to be a national Métis organization, a national. So still, there is no uh, there is no financials posted on the website for people to view. There's no accountability, no transfer, no transparency. And uh, you still do they have an office now? I don't do they, know. Are, do, are they telling people that they have the whole building Supposed at 340 McLaren Street? Supposed to be a Street? national organization. They were that when Chartier was in power. But however, now under Cassidy, they're more of a club. And they were becoming a club when Chartier, towards the end there, they were becoming a club too. And there was a lot of complaints. We got to get Chartier out of there. We got to get Chartier out of there because of this, this, this. But look at what you got. All these people, that goes back to voting again, all these people that put Cassidy in, the only way that you're really going to get a good leader into the Métis National Council as president, you have to vote every person that voted for Cassidy and supports Cassidy. They have to be voted out of office. And you can look on uh, social media, find out the people that's actually actively supporting Cassidy, and then you vote them out of office at election time. And I think Audrey knew that it was coming real close to her losing her seat as president. And why else would you push back the election? But yeah, that's how we're going to make the difference at the MNC is by casting their votes against those people to vote them out of office, the ones that voted Cassidy in the seat. Every one of them needs to be voted out of office. Unless, of course, uh, they see that Cassidy's messing up and they want to change their stance on, you know, uh, maybe Cassidy needs to be replaced. Maybe they change their support for Cassidy. And then then you have to evaluate how they're actually doing in their organization. <laughs> you know what? The MNC, in my opinion now, is really a sinking ship because uh, oh, yeah. I've, I've read on social media, many people have said that Cassidy is not accessible to questions. Uh, there is no financials posted. Uh, again, this uh, boggled uh, mess with the address and you got to wonder where are all the key papers and everything to do with audits and where is that stuff being stored if you can't even get your address straight i mean it seems like whoever's running the website at the mnc you may want to get somebody that has technical training again I'm not uh, saying that this person don't but if they do it's piss poor well yeah because it's it's out there for the the public to clearly see that you can't get an address date but like i said i could go on and on but piss the MNC. poor leadership piss <laughs> well, yeah, Poor leadership. Uh, we're not have we don't have somebody that uh, you know in my opinion uh, is going to really take it to a new era of the MNC. That's my personal opinion. And, and Cassidy could have turned that around. She could have turned it around easily by contacting us, coming on to the show because we reached out to her on social media, and uh, we've been snubbed. We've been snubbed on social media. It's funny. It's funny that. Uh, that uh, not just us, but other people too, when she posts something or whatever, I don't use the social media that all y'all use or whatever. So I know that y'all say that y'all contacted her or right mm -hmm. now because you can't get no answers. So you try to get answers through social media and uh, that's not working either. And so uh, she's snubbing people and that's, that's wrong, man. That's wrong. And you know what, Cassidy or whoever's doing your uh, indigenous history month, blurbs if you would do your history Cuthbert Grant Jr. has descendants in every single province and I know Saskatchewan is under your umbrella Alberta BC and Ontario there 
There is descendants of Cuthbert Grant Jr. in each and every one of those provinces. I know that because I correspond with them. So to snub uh, Cuthbert Grant Jr. I really think is disrespectful in my personal opinion. Know your know your people, know your Métis history. And with all this chaos... If it was up to her, <laughs> she would probably try to rewrite that history and put Audrey in there in place of Cuthbert Grant. That's how sick this, this whole situation has become. That's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. If you don't like it, whatever. And again, my opinion, and it's been historically mentioned that Cuthbert Grant Jr. really implanted uh, the notion of nationhood in the Métis people. So really, maybe you should honor and respect him. And more chaos going out in different provinces. We know that the Métis Nation of Alberta, there's a lot of turmoil, chaos going in Alberta. I read on social oh, media. Man, Alberta. On June, on June 7th, 2022, we know that uh, Graham Andrews was he put in as a candidate for the president of the Métis Nation of Alberta Association and all over on Twitter. And let me say this before you, before you go on. He was projected to win because we've talked to a lot of people. It looked like he was going to be the winner. Um, now, we, we haven't publicly came out and supported him or not supported him. But out of everybody we talked to in Alberta, it really looked like Graham uh, was going to be the one. Well, uh, you know what? To see two words on Twitter uh, on June 7th, 2022, just simply saying, I quit. And then I had information sent to me that uh, uh, what has been said is that um, allegedly that uh, he devoted countless hours in seven years just trying to simply Question the Métis Nation of Alberta Association. Ask As a questions. citizen yes. should. Ask questions, simply. And uh, more of what uh, Graham alleges is he says his business was attacked. He alleges he was defamed. Uh, he alleges he was sued by a Métis Nation of Alberta Association affiliate. Uh, he alleges that he was physically threatened. And he alleges as well that he was publicly humiliated. Now, I wonder who physically threatened him. Now, here, here's here's the thing. Okay, so I, I want to speak to a couple issues here. One, I want to speak to the lack of courage that I view as uh, Graham having. I don't. I, I think he lacked true courage there when he decided to quit. A uh, true leader is not going to drop out and quit. And it's sad that this person was going to be the projected winner. But the thing is, you see that he quit. He gave in and he has his reasons for giving in. We're not saying that they're not legitimate reasons, but if you're going to be a warrior for your people and you're going to go out there and be a president, you're not just going to back down at the first sign of trouble. Imagine that if our, our ancestors or Métis leaders of the past had actually just gave up and quit. And so, I mean, that is not the Métis spirit. And I think once he did that, even if he decided to come back and be a candidate in the future, I don't think he would stand a chance at this point because he did quit. Well, you know what? It says a lot, too. This is another example. The Métis Nation of Alberta Association President Audrey Poitras uh, has been president since 1996. Again, 26 years in power. Again, term limits. How can there be accountability, transparency, democracy if you've been in there for 26 years? And she wanted another year. She wanted another year because she knew damn well this was the year of change in Alberta. I guarantee you that's why she wanted another year. She seen that she that seat was about to be lost. And I, I have a different theory on why she wanted to wait another year, but I'm going to save that for a different show. But uh, yeah, that's that, that's my theory on it. Uh, I think that the feel that cha real change was about to come, and it wouldn't surprise me if by the next year if she figures some kind of way out, uh, manages some kind of way to keep in that seat. Well, the Métis Nation of Alberta Association, they had a special assembly on June 4th, 2022, where they wanted to postpone uh, the Métis Nation of Alberta election one year to September 2023. And then you'll see uh, a press statement on June 7th, 2022, where uh, they go in to say that the citizens of the Métis Nation of Alberta on June 4th voted in favor of a resolution brought before a special assembly asking that the next election, election scheduled 
for 2022 be postponed by one year. And they're saying that the bylaws of the Métis Nation of Alberta require a threshold of 75% of attendees to be in support of this resolution for it to pass. And now, according the next pro provincial council election for the Métis Nation of Alberta Association, now will be held September 20. 23. And uh, let me explain that. I, I was going to save this for another show, okay? At that time frame, if I'm not mistaken, the MNC has to uh, put in another president, right? I think Cassidy was going to be in there for, what, two years? So by September 2023, I think it's up for another election. I'm not sure. I could be wrong here, but to my understanding, when she was put in there last year, uh, she had two years, I think, before they had to do another election for them and see. So if you think about why she would want to stay into 2023, it could be to because she knows if she was voted out of office this year, whoever was put into that, that seat would not be voting for Cassidy again. So this could be an attempt to make, to keep Cassidy in power. And it's a damn shame. And that unfortunately uh, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if that's their little game plan they're trying to run. I'm not saying it is for sure, but it's, that's a theory that I have if I'm understanding how everything is supposed to work. If I'm wrong, then uh, comment in the comment section about uh, no, that I'm wrong. But I, I believe it was two years uh, before she before the next uh, MNC election, and that would put her in a spot to vote for Cassidy again. But, you know, now that you're talking about... Uh, and she's one of the people that voted for Cassidy, right? That's right. But when you're now you're bringing this into... To my understanding. ...to a different perspective, could that be why uh, this uh, statement of claim was put against the MMF so the financials wouldn't have to come out? I mean, this is just allegations. It, it, they are it, my opinion. It just seems like all of a sudden you do a statement of claim. Cassidy says, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. So it's yeah, so then, that, that, but that's what people think. People think they contact us and say, hey, she can't talk about it because there's a statement of claim. Understand there's only certain things in that statement of claim. Let's understand that one thing. There's other financial uh, records that don't have anything to do with that statement of claim. Where in the hell are they at? Why haven't they been released? Also, we were asking for the release of the financial information prior to the statement of claim. We, we, we were behind the scenes. You got to realize that we were the ones fighting to help uh, put in a new president for the MNC. So we were behind the scenes. We knew everything that was happening up until the point that that statement of claim was, was filed. So we, we, we were having discussions with people. We, we knew a lot of things that were going on in the backgrounds before that statement of claim was filed. They knew damn well that people wanted the financial information. And, uh, and they thought... By releasing that statement of claim, which makes one organization try to make one organization look bad, they thought by releasing that, that 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 could be their silencing thing where they don't have to release any financials. It seems to us, like you said, that would be a motivating factor for them, right? It, that's what it appears to us. However, what about the financials that don't have shit to do with that statement of claim? Where are they at? Why have they not been released? So for all the people out there that want to listen to the Puppets out there say, well, you know, the statement of claims in court, so they can't release any financial records right now. That's bullshit. Wake the hell up, man. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Do you understand? That's bullshit. They can release the other financials that has nothing to do with that statement of claim for the people to see. And we've always fought for transparency from any organization to the financial records get us out there. That's right. But you know what? How long is this MNC statement of claim going to be tied up through the colonial court system before the citizens are going to see anything? I've been asking way before about the Métis Veterans Legacy Fund, $30 million. So are we going to wait maybe allegedly years before we see any uh, hard uh, answers? Shady shit, man. Well, allegedly, uh, there's been an audit done, so can you not release the stuff that does not pertain to the statement of claim? Allegedly, there's an audit done, so where's the other information? And what I don't understand, if the statement of claim has any merit or any true weight to it, what the hell is the secret? The people that you did the statement of claim against, they already know what's in the financial records. 
Y'all already know. Why are you keeping it from the citizens? Why is it this excuse that, oh, that part of it's tied up in court? And that this is allegedly the excuse that, that we're hearing that people are saying, well, they might not can release it because of this reason. So if that's the reason it's true, why is that even, would it even be a valid reason since both parties know what's in those financial records? Why keep it from the citizens? But again, what about the, the financials that's not in that statement of claim? You ain't releasing those either. We haven't received, we hadn't seen any of those. Well, in my personal opinion, this is just smoke and mirrors and I'm just getting very sick and tired of it. I, I, I'm just sick and tired of it. And again, about the Métis Nation of Alberta Association, a lot of people, and this is alleged that the special assembly was held in Grand Prairie and a lot of citizens that I read uh, could not travel there. So that's why a lot of citizens could not go there and uh, to be part of that uh, special assembly when they're trying to have that uh, vote to the resolution to postpone the election for another year. And another it, tactic, another tactic. Stalling that they do. Yeah, that's a bunch of bullshit. Stalling tactics. I mean, tactics. They, these people that's been in office for like over 20 years, they're masters at getting around shit. And it's time for their ass to go or either you leave that organization and go to a different organization. If you can't get new leadership in this organization in Alberta, it's time to leave that organization and go to another organization. We hear so many people that, co that contact us complaining about the M&A, this, this, this. And the next thing you know, they're contacting us talking about good things about the M&A. And so it's like, man, get, get on a damn side, man. It's like you, you, either either you're taking issues with the M&A, you're mad at them one day and you're happy with them the next, mad at them the next. So, I mean, the, the truth is you're only happy if it's something to benefit you. And so we need to look at what's benefiting the people, the citizens of those organizations. As a whole, is the citizens being benefited. If you can't get new leadership in these organizations, it's time to switch the organization. It's time to go to a different organization. Uh, Audrey, clearly, she pushed off this election. She managed to succeed in her efforts of doing that. Uh, we think that's wrong. The election should have been held. Uh, we, we believe 100% you would have seen a new president. And I, I believe that her reason, in my opinion, for doing that is to try to keep Cassidy in power at the next MNC election. But everybody needs to is planning on voting for Cassidy in the next election. Y'all need to realize your citizens are going to be voting on your seat and you, you're more likely going to be replaced and lose your seats by, by keeping somebody that's not transparent, not willing to answer questions like we're talking about Cassidy now again. The MNC, you, you need to put somebody in there that's transparent and accessible to the damn people, period. And, you know, again, uh, sort of what's happening, too, in uh, the news on June 7th, 2022, we know that the alleged sexual assault charges against Dwayne, Dwayne Roth, the former CEO of the business operations for the Mackay Métis Group, were withdrawn. And uh, the trial that was connected to allegations from May 2017 near Lac La Biche, uh, Alberta. So with all the chaos happening, well, well, say that again so people can hear. I mean, I want, I want to, I want people to, to understand that. Were you talking about Dwayne Roth? Yes, on June 7th, 2022, the alleged sexual assault charges against uh, Dwayne Roth were withdrawn. 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 That so was, let's understand that. Uh, the status is they've been with. Drawn. And with all the Métis chaos with different organizations across Canada, we can't leave out uh, Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. That's for darn sure. And uh, I know on um, June 4th, 2022, Tom Isaac from Castle Brock and Blackwell was updating delegates in the Spring Métis Nation Legislative Assembly on the status of self-government, land claims, and harvesting negotiations. And I know a lot of people are upset when Tom Isaac is involved. Uh, allegedly, uh, people are saying that he's not Métis, he's not Indigenous. This is allegations. and That it, wouldn't surprise me. Well, yeah. And then well, the thing that bothers me when I did a little bit of research on Tom, Tom Isaac, that uh, he was acting uh, as a chief negotiator for the Government of Canada, the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, Northern Development Canada, in regards to the transfer of legislative authority over the lands and resources in the Northwest Territories. And a lot of people out there 
again, this is a shocker for me in regards to Tom Isaac, that he was um, defending the government of Canada against a First Nations class action claim involving fiduciary duties extending to the protection of First Nation property situated on a First Nation reserve. So he's worked for the government of Canada for a lot of times. So in my personal opinion, I don't know how he would have his uh, the Indigenous or Métis people best interest of heart when you really, you know, this is just, this is off, off their, uh, the lawyer, his, uh, law firm website. Uh, so he worked for the government of Canada against the indigenous people? Yeah, he was, uh, it says here he was defending the, the government of Canada against a First Nation class action claim. Conflict of interest, it seems like to me. But uh, they... Well, I mean, that's my opinion. That's yeah. what I see. Yeah, the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan feels that... This alleged uh, white man. But I mean, able to we don't know if he's Métis or not. We haven't seen his genealogy, but it's alleged he's a white man. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of people that I've spoken to, a lot of Métis people feel offended uh, that you have allegedly non-Métis, allegedly non-Indigenous person telling you if you're Métis or Indigenous or not. They get offended right away. Yeah, when they... To tell somebody if they're Indigenous or not. Well, especially if you've worked for a colonial government and all of a sudden, it seems that a lot of Métis organizations like to use colonial uh, people to do a lot of uh, lawsuits and all that kind of stuff and I I can't see in my personal opinion how it would have the Métis people their organization best interest at heart if you uh, if they've been worked for the colonial uh, government and we know in Métis Nation of Ontario there's still controversy going on in regards to their registry and all that we're hoping like you know we we revealed the MMF registry to all of you the problems uh, we haven't seen anybody else's registry. No, where the hell is where, everybody else registered? What what the hell is really going on in Ontario? And so what's really going on in Saskatchewan? And what's really going on in Alberta? And so let's understand what's really going on in all these other places uh, where we haven't, in British Columbia. And, and you know what? We It's only fair, is it not, that since we've seen the registries of the MMF, uh, we actually did a show on it. And there was a few issues there. and but, but, but wouldn't it be fair if you're listening to us, you other organizations, leadership, quotation marks, why would you not, why would you not think it would be fair for us to also talk about your registries? There's been a lot of accusations against Ontario. Be great if we could see that. Come on and clear it up. We did that with MMF. We, we did a show on it. Uh, we addressed the issues, and I think some people have responded to it on various social media. Again, I'm not on there like a lot of the people here at uh, Métis Warrior is, but I'll tell you that, uh, that people were responding and, um, and addressing some of the concerns there. And so my thing is, wouldn't it be fair to have all organizations uh, registry out there just like what happened with the MMF? We put that registry uh, audit out there, did we not? That's right. But a lot of people have been saying with a few other organizations, these are just allegations that a lot of people have their cards and then they have up to two years to provide the, genealogic, the genealogical information to back up their claim that they're Métis. I don't agree with that personally. I think when you're applying for a card in our organization, you have you should have all your documentation with your application. And a few people, these are allegations that in Ontario, a lot of people have cards and they had up to two years to provide uh, the documentation. That was allegations that people were complaining uh, no, about. No, I heard it specifically, specifically going towards the organization that, yeah, Somebody could come in, claim that they were Métis, and get money, and then ne never end up proving that they're Métis. They would get cut off, I think, like you said, two years or one two year later. Two years, yeah. And we have documentation on this. So if you want to challenge us and say, no, that's bullshit, well, hey, guess what? We, we have, <laughs> hey, we have proof that this shit was going on. And, you know, that, uh, yeah, people were, uh, and y'all know damn well you were doing it. You are letting people come into certain organizations, and I'm not going to name the organizations. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to refrain from doing that. But they were coming into certain organizations. They could say that they were Métis and be lily white as hell, but say they're Métis and get money with zip, zip, zero damn proof. And have 12 months to uh, two years to actually prove that they're Métis. Now, you shouldn't be giving anybody 
anybody funding, unless it's emergency funding, uh, you shouldn't be giving anybody any kind of funding that is not Métis because that's Métis money. It's not your damn money. But that's right. I mean, uh, I personally do not agree with somebody getting a Métis card and then giving them up to two years to provide documentation. That's my personal opinion. I don't agree with that. When you send it, when you apply for a membership in a Métis organization, you should have all your documents with you or don't bother applying because yeah. you're just tying up time, resources. I don't know if it's allegedly to be counted as a number for the federal government for funding. I don't know. These are allegations. I just don't know, but I don't agree with it. So basically with so much chaos going on with various organizations and out again, there, and, it's and, and, disheartening. And, and, and in the East too, I'm going to talk about in the East and we haven't addressed the East for a little while, but I just want to mention it briefly. That uh, I could tell you if you if you're Eastern Métis and you really are a Métis, and we know there's some Eastern Métis out there, and we know there's some people claiming to be Métis that are not Métis. But what's hurting you is your organizations that you end up joining. They're so secretive. They're so secretive. Like they, they I mean, if you don't think that's a financial grab for some of, the, I mean, saying for all of them, but for some of these organizations, and it just might be your organization. That you got to uh, really do your research that you paying fees to or dues to or whatever. Uh, that's a money grab. And so a lot of people that are not Métis claim to be Métis because they can see a profit off of it in the East. However, there is real Métis in the East. And the real Métis in the East, uh, y'all need to get together and actually get transparent with some of your organizations. There needs to be open transparency. If you have a leader that gets butt hurt very easily, that uh, gets offended very easily and holds grudges forever, then maybe you want to want to consider getting you a new leader because these are the things that are holding you back. The only people that's going to benefit in those situations are the people that's really reaping the uh, money, that's really getting the money. But the whole, as a whole, they're 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 slow in their movement and and yeah, we know that some of the organizations have gotten money for this, this, and this. But, uh, yeah, if you want to be acknowledged as Métis for all you that really have the genealogy paperwork, who really have proof that you are Métis, then, yeah, you got to stay away from the people that are pretending to be Métis. Now, there is Métis in the East, but there is also people pretending to be Métis in the East. But to, to say that, too, there is, going back to what Alexandria was saying, there's people in the West that's pretending to be Métis. And so they'll, they'll to get money, they'll, they'll say they're Métis, join these organizations and benefit off of it for a year or two uh, and, and and then never prove that they're Métis. So it happens in both the West and the East. It's not just the East. Yeah, it's not isolated to Eastern Canada. And uh, before we wrap up all the chaos and various uh, Métis organizations in Canada, again, June is National Indigenous History Month right across Canada. Uh, we've been putting up historical blurbs out there and thank you for everybody that has been reaching out saying they are enjoying it that's what you should be doing celebrating preserving sharing your history with everybody our Métis history really shouldn't have political agendas uh, aside put your differences aside and just celebrate who you are mm -hmm. your ancestors a lot of us have ancestors that are the same same genealogy family tree Put Can you imagine how I felt when I realized that me and Alexandria were both related to Cuthbert Grant Jr.? <laughs> but Celebrate who you are. Get out. Learn about who you are. Uh, share the history again. And like I said, we've got historical blurbs being put out with actual names in it. We tell you who the people are. And it's just not about Cuthbert Grant Jr. And again, uh, the Battle of Seven Oaks uh, anniversary is coming up as well. We'll be putting information about that as well. Let so, me just say, and, and we do know that uh, members of the MMF do go to the grave marker. And I know that's a sore subject for you uh, for, the, for the past history on how all that transpired. But at least they go there and they show recognition to Cuthbert Grant Jr. What you got to applaud them for. Well, you know what? Because they do recognize. That's right. I, I had a problem of it before and I got over that and I've kind of, you know, realized that as long as 
uh, the life of Cuthbert Grant, his achievements is celebrated. That's all that matters. And yeah. the Battle of Seven Oaks is coming up. Uh, the Battle of Seven Oaks again was June 19th, 1816. And, uh, you know, the MMF goes there every year. They put a sash over it and all that because a lot of people in the MMF are related to Cuthbert Grant Jr. as well. Yeah. So you can't squabble, be nitpicky about certain things. The past is the past. But as long as he's being celebrated for the, you know, the hero and the first Métis leader that he is, that's all that matters. Exactly. Well, that's it for me. And uh, we'll try to get another show out for you soon. I just, uh, it's just been chaos. I mean, there's been a lot going on and, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of disappointing things happening, but a lot of good things happening from the Manitoba Métis Federation. There's a lot of great things happening. Absolutely. I agree. And it, it's, it's refreshing to walk around and hear people talk positive about the MMF. I mean, you know, so you can't hold grudges against an organization. People need to come together and actually unite. There should not be a grudge holding uh, between various organizations and stuff like that. We, we need to drop the grudges and come together and actually unite and work for the benefit as the, of the people as a whole. That's right. So take care. All right. So uh, until next time. Bye-bye.